When 70-year-old Patricia McCarthy experienced breathing difficulties early on New Year's Day, she made her way straight to Cork University Hospital's A&E. A nurse helped her to a chair where she was treated with oxygen, but she never expected to be left on that chair for as long as she was. I sat in that pod for 57 hours with my coat and my pillow. My husband got a chair with a blanket on it. And I stay there for 57 hours. And what I witnessed, I am appalled. I am ashamed of the health system. I'm ashamed of my city. People have to go through what I went through. After 57 hours, Patricia was moved to a trolley before finally getting a bed last night. And what she witnessed in the meantime is something which will haunt her. I had a young mother lying on the floor in pain because she couldn't sit on her chair and heard the children, Mommy, we love you, don't cry. Imagine that. No blanket on her, no pillow. There is no shower unit. I had to wash myself for 57 hours when I got off my oxygen with baby wipes. A statement from the hospital says it can't comment on individual cases. However, like all acute hospitals across the state, CUH is experiencing very high levels of demand for services and is currently operating at maximum capacity. It says regrettably while patients presenting at the hospital are experiencing long delays, urgent patients will always be prioritised for treatment and care. Patricia has nothing but kind words for the nurses and medical team looking after her. People, she said, are run off their feet. But she says she is frightened for the patients of Cork who find themselves swept up in the chaos of this hospital overcrowding during some of their most vulnerable moments. Hannah Murphy, Virgin Media News. Well, Patricia McCarthy's case was also raised at a HSE briefing this evening. It's first of 2023 as the hospital overcrowding crisis comes to a head. Our news correspondent Richard Chambers was there. So, Richard, what was the HSE's response to Patricia's story? Well, Claire, I raised uh, Patricia McCarthy's story with the HSE's interim CEO, Stephen Mulvaney, as well as uh, other cases of people waiting uh, 50 hours plus uh, on trolleys or on chairs uh, to be admitted in emergency departments. Uh, this is something the HSE is all too aware of at this point. Last week, the last week of 2022, uh, more than 1,800 patients waited for longer than 24 hours for admission in emergency departments. So I asked uh, Stephen Mulvaney what the HSE had to say to people who had to go through that ordeal, uh, who had to have uh, their, uh, their, their, their patient histories and their uh, issues uh, overheard by people with an earshot of them and have staff effectively apologise to them for the state of affairs that they are currently being treated in. And uh, here's what he had to say to all of that. We accept, uh, Richard, it's, it's not good enough. It's not what we want. It's not what the staff try every day to make sure doesn't happen. And um, what we ask the patients to do is to accept often our apologies and that's you know and we seek to make the patients as comfortable as possible okay now the key issue obviously is it, it is sickest patients first so we are trying to get to the, the sickest patients and other patients will, will, will wait longer now there are patients waiting for admission uh, you can see them if you visit hospitals and AD departments as we have been and you have to have a very hard heart not to feel a kind of a sense of loss at, at looking at some of that. So, so we know that's not what the, is good for the patients. It's not what the staff are trying to do. And at the moment, the best we can do is ask people to bear with us. I was speaking earlier on to members of the Irish Hospital Consultants Association about comments made by uh, the Health Minister Stephen Donnelly. One of the potential solutions to this, which is being pushed by the HSE, is that all staff, senior clinical staff uh, included, will be available seven days a week uh, to try and to beat the backlog of patients uh, currently waiting in hospitals across the country. Uh, the Hospital Consultants Association uh, feel that they are being unfairly singled out, that consultants are already available uh, right around the clock, right around uh, the weekends and over the Christmas holidays as well uh, to deal with their patients. They say this is simply about investment in inpatient beds and that's something which the HSE and the government they say hasn't got to grips with for many, many years. Now one of the things the consultants and other hospital staff uh, have raised is the issue of patient safety that when you have people uh, waiting for so long for a bed at the risk of death uh, very much increases. I asked the HSE whether anyone had died as a result of the lengthy delays at this point. Here's what they had to say. I'm not going to comment on individual cases. As serious events are, adverse events are reported, they are fully investigated and lessons have to be learned. But it's fair to say, okay, that A, 
every health system in the world has avoidable and preventable deaths and harm. And Ireland is no different in that, in that context. And we know that conge over congestion in EDs increases the risk of harm to patients, and, that, and that's a fact. So that is why we're seeking to take all these measures to mitigate that as much as possible. Well, I asked also Stephen Mulvaney about the situation regarding beds and why the HSE simply doesn't go to the government and ask year on year for more beds to try and make sure that this isn't an annual occurrence in emergency departments in this country. He says, well, the situation wouldn't be solved now as a result of adding beds, saying that over the last three years we've seen more beds added in terms of acute hospital beds than there has been over the last 40 years, he said. Uh, he says this is something which is going to obviously going to be constantly reviewed, uh, but it is something which is obviously bearing out uh, very, very desperately uh, in our hospitals this year. Richard Chambers, thank you for that.